Good day and welcome back to Torment Tides of Ranmanera. Last time round we made it to Sanctuary. Um, and then we had a very Action. irritated lady uh, chat with us. Uh, we apparently broke the seal, which they're not particularly pleased by. Oh, Firewall and Sanctuary Separate, Seawater and Bone not active right now. Um, entrails of a dead beast and smells of sulfur. But yeah, so we made it into the Sanctuary. Uh, at a time when the Sanctuary had sealed itself to try and protect the occupants against the Sorrow, and I'm sure our temporary unsealing of it in no way will cause any problems for anyone down the line. So uh, let's actually explore. Clearly we're in some kind of a force fieldy dome thing given these things, but it looks pretty neat. All right, let's. Uh, these machines are a power from somewhere, from somewhere underground. They generate shields that color the sky. There seem to be several of them around the sanctuary. And now I guess we'll get to see just how many there are. I'm gonna wander around and not talk to people for the moment, just so I've got like a picture of this place. And there's lots of people named, but there's also plenty of. Apparently, there are enough castoffs that not all of them are worthy of a name in this game. They're having a chat. Probably talking about... Oh, right, of course, this is neutral ground. Uh, so here's kind of the various people having a chat. Who's better? First, uh, um, the, the nameless... Uh, what? Not nameless? Jeez. Changing God. And these two are also having a chat about the defences, basically saying, you know, totally not actually enough to defend. This isn't a major hub, so much like the um, City of Dead Heroes, or Valley of Dead Heroes, we're not going to stay here for too long, is my prediction. Because the next hub is the Bloom. Alright, so now we have looked around, right? There's plenty of people to talk to and devices to interact with. And that's kind of what I'm going to do first, right? Here's a tip of some larger machine, perhaps whatever's powering the shield generators around the sanctuary. It helps softly, almost musically. The wind around this structure is oddly moist, and there's a smell you can't identify, an unfamiliar meat, perhaps, spoiling in the sunlight. And there's something else, an acrid, silent tingling hanging in the air, the feeling of power held in reserve. You reach out to touch the sloping side, but hesitate. Strange. The surface is smooth, inviting even, and yet your instincts tell you that something within the structure wants you to touch it, to come inside, to yield and fall to the earth, exposing your softest parts to... You stumble back, shaking your head. Yeah, you don't want to do that. None of us is sure what it is or why the first left it behind. I think it's a last-ditch defense against the sorrow if all else fails. Others say different. Feels nasty enough, doesn't it? Examine the structure again. Let's touch the structure. Anyway, I mean we gotta save. Gritting your teeth, you ignore the repulsive waves pushing at you and place your palm on the structure's surface. Eyesight deserts you. You fall, toppling into the bottomless darkness through clouds of slimy, probing bodies. They pry at your lips, suckle at moisture around your lips and scrape urgently at your eyelids. Something clutches at your heart and crushes it. This is the last thing you feel. Oh, well, I mean, we haven't been back here for a while, so... Seems as good a time as any to get ourselves killed. Sup, Spectre? What's on your mind? Has anything changed since the last time I was here? Look around, it's your mind. Oh, jeez, come on. Fine. I'm ready. Right, let's chat with Seria. She idly flexes her transparent hands, humming a halting, tuneless little melody under her breath. The connection between you pulses with the ribbon rhythm of her song. Let's chat. I like your mind. Nice high ceilings. What does that puzzle box mean to you? My father gave it to me, she says, beaming down at the ghostly version of the box in her hands. He says it was a very old puzzle, and solving it would help me. I never did, but fumbling with it made me feel better. I always got the feeling the pictures on it might mean something, but that was as far as I got. Alright, yes. well, that's enough of that, I guess. 
Okay, so yeah, there's definitely more stuff here. Eritus, in a fair. Leave. Um, let's go up here first then. I guess both of those will be marked as leave area. Okay. Eritus. What's up, buddy? The reflection before you resembles Eridus, but an unmistakably older one. No golden glow surrounds him. He's plain, weathered. His hair is streaked with grey and white. His mind is blank to you, dark. His eyes are wild with the weight of his thoughts, but you can't hear any of them. Um, how can I help you? Er he does not appear to have heard you. I need help, he repeats softly. I'm lost. I lived in a grey field with my yol. I named them and pet them and clip the yellow wool. A tear spills down his nose and drops to the ground. I think they're all dead now. No one to feed them but me. He looks around, possibly for an exit. A dark red light rises in his pale eyes. That was a long time ago, before the demons came out of the black box and filled me. Before I was called to adventure! The louder words tear themselves out of him, and he recoils from them, covering his ears. The glow ebbs from his eyes as suddenly as it came. That's one of the voices I've been hearing in the other Eritus's mind, isn't it? He nods, clutching his ears. They're the loud ones, the brave ones who make me be brave. The other ones whisper, they watch, they're hungry. Indigo flickers at the center of youth's pupils. Like a distant bonfire, they want me to die. Eritus's mouth doesn't move, but the words seem to come from him anyway, hissing from the depths of his throat. You want to be free of them, don't you? No, my life will be boring, useless, without them. Eritus staggers back yet another step. Pressing his lips together, the reddened indigo flames coiling in his pupils subside until only the pale blue remains. Yes, please, I want to go home. I want to find my yell and go home. Drive them out of me, please. I don't want to be me anymore. I want to be him again. You mentioned a yell before. What is that? Herd creatures, he says. A look of calm happiness drifts beneath his troubled face, soft yellow wool, milk and cheese, something like grief descends through his expression, devouring his brief happiness. My herd is lost now. I think they're gone. Why can't I hear your thoughts? I, I don't know. I, I think they're holding them, living in them, infesting them. It sounds like you liked being a yol herder. Not until I wasn't one anymore. I lived in the nameless field where my mother was buried. I liked making songs in my head, but I hated that field, that leaky house. He presses his fingers against his hollow cheeks. I wanted to leave it all behind, to sing for people, for meals in distant taverns, but now I wish I could go back there, sing to my animals, and sleep where my mother slept. Do you have any idea what kind of demons are inside of you? I don't, but I feel them, hear them. They glow and keep me awake. They shout and whisper. They live in my veins and cling to my spine with tiny teeth. And how did you get them? One of my girl wandered into that dead valley. He says casually, but his hand is clenched to the side. Its tracks went around the alcove, and I decided to sleep there for the night. I heard sounds inside a dark box on the shelf, and I opened it. Ever since, I've been buried by them. By the other me, screaming and crying, never sleeping. He rubs his eyes with dirty knuckles, like a child. I never found my y'all, and now I never will. They don't let me sleep. I'm hungry all the time. They don't think of me as real. I'm their toy. How can I help? I don't know. Find healers, maybe. Or doctors. Okay. Fair enough. In a fair. The pale image of Inifer regards you with empty, woe-worn eyes. It's an emptiness to drown in, a pit that can swallow whole. The all the empathy the heart can give, without being filled even a bit. Like all voids, it beckons and seeks to drag you in. I'd speak. I would speak with you, Inifer. Inifer shrugs the spectral shoulder. It is a lot of of scabs to be picked. The mark of the weak to be pecked. Mine, my vain sister, with thy vain mind. How did you get here? You consumed me, sifter. The sister, wherever my foul flesh festers, you've made a fouler feast of that which lasts past death. From one world of woe to another, sister. Have you found some comfort here? Our father framed my flesh as a rack for pain, sister, and left no crook from which to hang a heartbeat's joy. Idly, I'd seek an, an ideal and know no peace, even in places better than this bitter warren. But there are worse holes to hide in, and worse hole homes than the head of she who fell to me. I mean, I didn't actually kill you. I convinced you to close the gate. How can I help you? 
Unmake me, sister. Unwind time and tides. Or break the causal chains that drag down the, the present down to the past black depths. Or block my tale of the scroll, the scroll of days to come. In a fair causal's lips and a smile, it's more of a smile. But you cannot, little sister. Even the changing god could not change a thing, and you are but his walking shadow. Tell me something you learned in your years beyond the gate. Sister, all places teach the same woe. There are better things for you to study. Come, tell me something you learned. No, sister, these are not lessons fit to, for words. Can you teach me how to open the gate? Never, sister. It is a lesson I would teach to none but the one who made us. Let Inafair's emptiness drag you in. You allow Inafair to draw part of you into his pain-hollowed heart, and in turn you take part of his agony into yourself. In doing so, you feel yourself harden and grow stronger, though it's a strength that seems to twist inside you. Ooh, new ability. So, in affairs madness. Oh, right, like Zarya's piece. So this dropped our intellect pool by one and gave us more intimidation. Yeah. I mean, as a trade-off, actually, I'm fine with that. I imagine there's a limit to the number of those abilities we can have at once. So is there any reason to go here? No. No, there is not. Hey, you should totally chat with people. Yep, that sounds reasonable. Um, and then we can go here. Where is here? Have we been here before? Is this the um, probability thing? It is the probability thing. Gotcha. Yeah. So I don't need to go back here. We can leave. We've done everything we can do here. But that means the other one. The one down to the right we haven't been to. So we should go there. Ready. What's through here? I get the feeling that mirror will eventually be re repaired somehow. I just don't know how. Oh, this is the original lab. As your body pours from the portal, an ad hoc laboratory comes into view. Irregular catwalks connect several platforms, each littered with dusty machines, tools, and displays. In the center of each platform stands a strong glass tank like the orbs from the dark fathoms where you were born in. You have a feeling that, like the orbs, these tanks contain your memories. Each tank is connected to a machine on the same platform. Caustic black echo of sputters from all but the nearest of the glowing tanks, keeping you from seeing or even feeling what lies inside. The oily film to the nearest machine pauses as almost as if it's noticed your presence. It begins to drain from the device. As the black sludge coalesces, you recognize it as a fragment of the sorrow, stronger from feeding on your subconscious all this time. Because the fragments have been feeding under tidal energy, you sense they are bound to you, at least for now. You may be able to use the machines in this place to manipulate them. A me mental reflex twitches, a subconscious response to the perceived threat, calling forth reflections of your current companions. So, okay, I guess yeah. I can so this is neat. For one reason, right? Um, so kill or trap the, the fragments, and yeah. So, the, I mean, it's neat for a bunch of reasons, but this used to be your crisis tutorial. This lab. So actually you would attune to the tides and get the tidal surge ability before you ever entered Sega's Cliffs. Um, before you woke up for the first time, basically. And now they've repurposed it. I figured they wouldn't have completely eliminated it. But yeah. Cool. Um, so the question is, can we attack? Should we attack? Eritus, so you're the current one. So there are three labs. Um, we can examine... Yep, resonance chamber, memories of your size, first experiments. So these are ones that are blocked. And I assume this may be related to the tides that I already knew. I can't get close enough to you. What if... Okay, so that's purple, which means I can get to here, right? What if I hook you? Uh, 
Okay. So we can try attacking. Let's go... Um, what's the range? Not on Innovate, but on Onslaught. I can attack from here, really. So that's like with my... Yeah, okay. So I can get a 90% chance and that does not actually very much damage. I can detonate. Innovate. What else can I do? Insight action. Let's try that. Okay. So he's got a 50% chance and he'll do more damage if he hits. Wow, Eridus, you are way better than, at this than me. Oh wow, nice crit. Okay, and I'm gonna head this away. Yes. Look out, villains. Trouble coming your way. Pop out. All right, Rin. You actually don't have a great deal of stuff you can do. Conserve the next cipher to be used a second time, but I thought I'd given you various ciphers to use. Evidently not. So what weapon do you have? So you had a ranged weapon, light ranged weapon. Trust and honesty are our bonds. Right, okay. So Rin, let's have you use up all your Okay. Matkina? You can charge in. If we infuse weapon. Um. Hmm. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh. What do we got? We can warp dash. Uh, teleport to a point, make a short ranged. Uh, uh, yeah. And gain hobble. So. That would imply if I move here, and then warp dash. A little surprise for you. It's not working. Try something okay, else. and the sorrow fragment does something. It misses. It tries to attack Rin and misses. Alright, you... Just slam it. Just slam in. Oh nice, another crit. Okay, so that was fl flat out kill on the Sorrow Fragment. Let's go... Okay, intercepted you, you're unable to interact with this machine. Okay, here. Um, judging by the images and information floating across this display, some sort of control mechanism. Let's uh, consume, let's basically lure fragments this way. But I think that may actually cause a particular fettle, which we don't have yet, obviously. Sure. So what happens if you run over here, Rin? Okay. Foreign body present in fly tidal flow regulators. Configure flush. Flush the system, just enough to remove the fragment. Oh wow. So you've got no chance. Yeah, fine. Machine's overwhelmed with power too much. It okay. So she gets knocked prone and the fragment gets kicked out. Okay. Matkina. Oh, you also got knocked prone somehow. Poor in. Okay, Eridus. Let's see, if I put you here and hook again? Oh crap, I accidentally moved him too far. My bad. Okay. Um. Let's try energy. Ah, uh, right, I see. So, it's good against energy. What about chemical? Nope. What about... Mental? 
Nope. <laughs> Just none of these are much good. Eh. Okay. Rin, you get up. Let's try something, Rin. Can't, why can't you hide, Rin? No, like, really, why can you not hide? If we interact with this... Okay, Tidal Pulse. Okay. A Matkina. We could try Warp Dash again. We could try the Dust. Alright, let's see. We move up and we try the Dust. Oh. Yep. Sounds great. And it doesn't reach. Oh look, it pops out too. So now we're dealing with two of them. Okay, now. Can we kick this around at all? Knock back, fell swoop. And hook. Alright, we'll just hit it. Again, we're just going to use a couple of points. Flanked, but... Oh, no crit, right. Not but missed, just no crit. That didn't do anything for us. Uh, we... What do we have? Do we have a ranged weapon? No, we got a melee weapon. That's fine. We can try just hitting it in melee. Yeah, let's just try, like, a big king hit. Okay, yep. Um, that was that, so let's move back. Don't want to be in it, ideally. Okay, now Rin. Next enemy that makes a melee attack. I probably should have used that. Um, active one round. No, okay. Um, you can't really do much there. Why can't you hide, though? So, at some point, or is it just that uh, none of my characters have their uh, ciphers on them? Gotcha. But why can't you hide? I mean, I guess we'll leave it for now. Matkina, if you run up and stab. Oh wow. Yeah, sure. Sonic Disruption. And so it moves around, it hits Eridus. Not actually that big a deal, frankly. Okay, now. Yeah, just kill it. And you know what? You also run up. I mean, you're kind of here. To get in the way. Okay, last cast off. You run up and you hit with onslaught. Let's go with mental again. What do you think of this? Oh, dazed it too. Great. Now Rin. Let's try the same thing. Nope, all gone. So, got nothing. You move that. Madkina, you run up and strike. Again, I'll do the 11 damage. And Sonic Disruption. So, those are both various negative pedals, and it bursts. No, it's starting a burst. No, it does best. Okay, so missed two of us. Other two get to get up. Don't want to use fell swoop. I mean, why do you have hide and the other not? And why do you want to start my back up oh, frag? My backup system decided it wanted to tell me to do something. Um, can I tell Eridus to do that? No.
Ah, oh, fine. So dismay. Five percent chance. Never mind. Again, I think it's just worth hitting it for what we got. Rin, you move up and hit with as much as you can. I mean, we could probably have tried clever things with the environment, but we aren't. Instead, we're just going to stab it until it dies. I don't know what Sonic Disruption does. Oh, minus one armor. Let's have you sit here. It seems to make it slightly harder for it to move. Oh, and Makina is hard to hit. Fantastic. Alright, Eridus has run up. Um, make sure you kill it. Yeah. With the last of the sorrow fragments neutralized, you feel a cool breeze flow through you, mind and body. Your muscles tense with dexterity and strength you haven't felt before, and your mind flows gracefully from thought to thought, exploring possibilities and sensations more quickly than before. Gradually, you become aware of a shadow in your mind. The sorrow still has one stronghold somewhere in the labyrinth. You've almost driven it out entirely, but not yet. And next time round, we'll explore the lab. Until then, have a great day. Bye. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you spending the time and effort watching the videos I make. Uh, if you'd like to watch more, on the left there should be another video from this playlist. On the right there will be whatever YouTube recommends. And in the center there is a convenient subscribe button just in case you need it.